Models starting to show some signs of agreement, but uncertainty remains with a potential formation in the Caribbean that the NHC says will emerge in the Gulf of Mexico within the next week. We are live from your hurricane headquarters on Track in the Tropics to let you know what the latest is with this potential formation and where it could possibly head. Here live on Track in the Tropics with WFLA meteorologist Rebecca Barry on the right side of your screen. I'm JB Buno. We'll be taking your questions with hashtag Hey Rebecca, hashtag Hey JB. A quick note before we send Rebecca over to the wall. This is the Friday, September 20th edition of Track in the Tropics. And I say that because of how much uncertainty exists with this potential formation. Every day, Rebecca, things could change with the model runs. So even Saturday, Sunday, this could be a different story that we're telling, but the new model runs have been coming in and starting to show some agreement here. It's the first signs of agreement we've seen with this system. And so it's just been incredibly uncertain whether it even would form. But then it, the model started to generally agree that we were going to see some formation down in the Western Caribbean. And so that's what we're watching mainly for next week. We've also got the remnants of Gordon and then another system. These only have 20% chances to develop. It's really this one system that all eyes are on. One, because if it once it does get into the Gulf, it doesn't have much time before it starts to affect land. And so this isn't one of those long form storms where we track it off of the Cabo Verde Island all the way across the Atlantic for a week before we have to even potentially think about making some preparations. This will be, it will spin up quick and it will make an impact relatively quickly. Think 24 to 48 hours, depending on how fast it ends up moving. So we have finally some rain in this area. It's been sunny skies for the last two days over the area that we're predicting eventually will form. It's closer to that seven day range than the two day range. Nothing's going to happen over the next two days. And so the GFS and the Euro still disagree quite a bit and the GFS and the Euro still disagree the most. And so the Euro is keeping it very weak. The Euro is kind of an outlier at this point. And so here's when we start to see first signs of formation. We'll see some showers and thunderstorms moving up into the Western Caribbean. Here's the point that they start to get more organized and then right almost immediately they start to separate. But look, we're talking a week from now. And so this is still very, very far out. The timeline keeps getting pushed back with each model run as well. And so that's another factor in the forecast is the timing. And notice how the Euro is very slow to develop and pushes it out over the Yucatan Peninsula and into the Western Gulf while the GFS starts to move towards the Panhandle and Alabama, southeastern Georgia. Mississippi and Louisiana. So this is Friday next week, not today, a week from today that we're looking at it in the Gulf. And then by Saturday, the GFS has impact mainly in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and the extreme western panhandle of Florida. Of course, the dirty side would be on the panhandle where we would see the worst winds and the worst storm surge. Meanwhile, the Euro is just still hanging out in the Gulf here, not moving very much at all, not developing very much at all. And once again, the Euro is the outlier at this point because we are starting to see the very first signs of agreement. The Euro doesn't even move it much even through the weekend, just keeping it just sitting there. And so when we take a look at the other main computer models, so here's the Euro right here, just kind of meandering around in the Southern Gulf. The green is the GFS, the one we just watched. But we're going to bring in the Canadian, which has a more Louisiana and Texas impact. We're going to bring in the German model, and it has a, it's just to the east of the GFS. And then the European AI, that's the newest model incorporating AI technology into the European model. So this is the regular European model, and the European AI falling more in line with what the other forecast models are saying, showing more of a Pensacola landfall. And so this is the first signs of agreement, and it doesn't mean much because it is only one model run where we're seeing a little bit more consensus. And the euro, which is a big player in the forecasting world, still not on board with this forecast at all. And so it's still very, very uncertain. This is not even an invest system yet. Hurricane forecast models don't do very well with systems until they actually form. When they actually form, and the models are basically lo locate the center of that, that has a lot to do with where that actual track ends up. Because if it forms 100 miles, 200 miles to the east, all of these tracks shift to the east. The same if it forms to the west, all of these tracks shift to the west. Also, the steering currents that would steer it north or hold it down are still forming because we're still over a week out. And so it's just a little too soon to tell. But it's looking more and more likely like we are going to have a system in the Gulf by the end of next week. And here's why we're watching it so closely, in addition to the fact that we're meteorologists and we watch all the storms closely. But it is over some of the warmest waters on the planet. 
the ocean, available ocean energy is highest exactly where this system will form. And so if, if it can form, it's going to have all the fuel and all the energy it could ever want to get stronger and to unfortunately get become a more powerful storm. And all of that available ocean heat energy does track with the loop current here up into the Gulf, especially the Eastern Gulf. It's not quite as bad on the Western Gulf, but it's still very high. And so where the Euro has that system hanging out, it still has some high, it's not extreme, but high ocean heat energy. And so just very, very warm out there. And it's a reminder of where we are in the season. You know, right now, the, the areas to watch map looks a lot like what we expect in the middle of August. We're in the middle of September, so we're just past the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. That still means we have half the season to go, of course, but we are looking at potentially things starting to ramp down next month, especially, and into November is when things get really quiet. And so when you look at the names, I think especially when we've talked about how hot the waters were going to be this season and we looked at the potential for La Nina to form, of course, La Nina has been really late, which has been good for our season. I think we thought would be a lot further along in these names, but the next name system will be Helene. And looking at the other areas in the Atlantic, it's more likely that the system in the Gulf will form and will take that next name on the list, which is Helene. Normally, eye storms are the nastiest. We've retired a lot of eye storm names. Think about it, Ian, uh, most recently. And so we have uh, a lot of history with the eye names. So whenever that rolls around, especially Floridians, especially Texans, people in the Gulf start to pay attention to that eye name. These are the other two systems. They're looking less and less likely to develop. These, this is actually the remnants of Gordon. But even if these did develop, they would stay out over the open Atlantic. And so we're right in the middle of September. So our formation zones, we're not seeing a lot of formations in our typical formation zones. We are not looking at anything spinning in this most likely area. Now, where we are looking at that more likely area is where the, that system is going to end up. But so that formation zone that we're looking at is more of the likely zone. So it's not even necessarily one of the hot spots that we look for this month. The steering currents change throughout the season as low pressure systems start to move a little bit further south. And that's what we look for in October. And that's what we worry about with those particularly ice storms, because usually that's how it lines up, is we have the potential, instead of going straight up into the Gulf, like the systems we're predicting to, especially by next month, they start to recurve because of that low those low pressure system and the steering currents changing there. And so that changes your October tropical development zones. And that puts the bullseye right on the peninsula of Florida, right up into the Carolinas as well. And so that's what we're monitoring with this system once again tons of uncertainty. I know you've got lots of questions. I've got lots of questions as well. But <laughs> I've got lots of questions as well. Yes, yes. And so it's just a little too soon to tell, but this is, I, I was a little a little cranky when I came in to JB because talking about the system because these are the hardest tracking the tropic episodes to do since we don't have spaghetti models yet. We don't have any of the forecast models yet and it's going to change so drastically. But when I saw the updates from what I looked at this morning to now, I got a little more, a little less cranky about doing this one because we're starting to see that first hint of agreement. Let me tell you, Rebecca is never cranky so if she's cranky cr no it, cranky. like it, it, we work together a lot you're never really all that cranky if you are <laughs> cranky it's for good reason and, and so look everyone this is really the graphic to, to hone in on because we're getting a lot of scientific data represented or the consensus really of all these various models that are kind of beginning to form an alignment here with at least at least the early part of this storm which is again a potential formation it's not even an invest yet but it would go across the yucatan really uh, across cozumel and then emerge into really the heart of the gulf right the middle of the gulf and then where it goes from there more towards the texas gulf coast more towards the north gulf coast that really i guess remains to be seen this will look very different sunday monday tuesday I am sure of it. Uh, let's uh, go to the comment section here. You can use hashtag hey Rebecca, hashtag hey JB with your social media comment, um, and we will spotlight your comment on screen. We'll let people type in their comments and and go to them here in a moment. But if you start right now by typing in hashtag hey Rebecca or hashtag hey JB with your Facebook Live comment, we can display it on screen in our meteorologist Q and A. Uh, New Orleans is mm -hmm. right there in the heart of this. Rebecca, they just got hit. Uh, by uh, Francine. And, and while, uh, the, you know, New Orleans has seen worse in their day than Francine, that is still an area that is now quite saturated, no? 
yes, once you get hit by a storm, you feel like, okay, we did our, we did our part, you know, we're done for the season. And so it, you, you just hate to see the potential for another storm to run right over the same area. And that's kind of exactly what we're looking at with the GFS model right there. Now, what will happen over the next four to five days is these will change a bit, but the next dramatic update will be when the system actually forms. When the system actually forms and we know where the center of the system is, that's when we'll have all of the models kind of snap into line based on that new position, based on that new center. Because right now, these forecast models are running off of a potential center where they think the center will form. Once that center actually forms, that'll be the next step in certainty. And in between now and then, it's just going to be watching these forecast models roll out, seeing if they continue to agree or start to act wonky. The European AI is the newest model, and so it's kind of an experimental product. And so that one's the one that's been changing the most, and it's the easiest one to ignore. Um, I'm curious as to see if the euro, the normal euro, that red line ever gets on board because it's been very consistent in this being headed towards Mexico, maybe Texas at the, the northernmost tracks over the last couple of days. So once the euro gets on board, that's when I think I'll, I'll be a little more confident. Yeah. And, you know, people that have watched track in the tropics in the past know that the euro has such a loyal following to see it almost be a borderline outlier at this stage. I mean, it's early, but mm -hmm. to see it be curving that far to the west before emerging into the Gulf is certainly interesting that the four other models are more in agreement than the Euro is. But again, super, super early with this one. We got your comments coming in, folks. Let's get to some of the comments that are coming in on Facebook Live. And we're going to start with Kiki. Again, use a hashtag, ask a question, and we'll start with Kiki's comment. Hashtag, hey, Rebecca, does Southeast Texas have something to uh, to worry uh, about. And we'll go back to the models here, R Rebecca, because, yeah, Texas is certainly, you know, on the map. Yeah, and just like Tampa's on the map. And so uh, Southeast Texas and Tampa are both kind of going, well, it looks like it might not be our storm. That could change in between now and then. And so that's why we, we talk about things so early, especially with storms that are going to form so close to land. Um, but So it's, you're not out of the woods in Southeast Texas, but right now it's looking less and less likely. Yeah, I see now here that we, you know, we're again, the European model is there twice, European and European AI. That's a perfect segue, of course, to this question from Andy, Michael, hashtag here, Rebecca and JB. It's too early to tell, but what do you guys think about the new AI model they started doing uh, this year? And I think that, you know, we've had conversations in the past mm -hmm. about how artificial intelligence is going to become more and more part of the conversation when it comes to forecasting for extreme weather events. Uh, is this the season that we start to see AI used more and more? Or is it more of a future tool? What do you think? Rebecca? I think it will get much, much better. Uh, that's one of the strengths of AI is that it self learns and self teaches and it self adjusts. Uh, I can tell you that I've seen some really, really wonky runs out of the European AI this year, but also all of the models have been doing pretty poorly this season, and we're blaming it on the unprecedented water temperatures, the lack of La Nina. La Nina is developing so late. And so forecast models for the past month have been, you know, almost insisting that a system was going to form, and they would agree that a system was going to form, and that time frame would roll around, nothing. And so... We can't really, it's not a fair year to, to judge the, the European AI because all of the forecast models have been so um, reliant on old forecasting methods. And so I just think that it will get better. I'm excited. I love AI technology. I love the inclusion of it when it's done responsibly. Uh, and I'm so excited to see that incorporated into the Euro. And it's certainly um, if this scenario plays out and what happens with the main models that are that are beginning to agree on like that kind of New Orleans to Alabama landfall, the European AI catching that much faster than the more traditional European. Let's go to this question from Veronica. Veronica, this this is this is kind of tough now because I you know I'd like to feature as many comments as possible, and this one's a little tough to read. Uh, so I believe what you're saying is yeah, we're showing it early. When will we know to be? ready I, I guess what you know veronica is asking here rebecca if i'm doing my best to read that comment uh is is exactly when a certain region whether it's new orleans mm -hmm. or the texas gulf coast or even the florida panhandle when 
they would know to start preparing. I mean, really, you always want to start to prepare now. Yeah, I think a week from now is when we're looking at a certainty as far as landfall goes, like knowing that w where it's going. Uh, most f forecast models have it in the mid Gulf at that point, except for the Euro, of course. Um, in the red there. And so I think by, because they're showing by Friday, um, it being in that mid, mid Gulf. And so by Wednesday, I think we'll have a better idea. And so I would think if you're preparing Wednesday and Thursday by Friday, we're certain and it's go time. If it's evacuation time, that sort of a thing, because we're looking at a Saturday, Sunday impact for most areas, except the Euro. Let's go to this one from Steve. Hey, Rebecca says Steve, uh, on the WFLA Facebook page, uh, if a storm was to form in the Gulf, what would be the chances that it turns into a Category 3 or higher before hitting land, given the time frame when it's formed in the Gulf, and I see Tampa isn't in the models uh, any longer? Steve must be paying attention to the models because yes. there was a time where Tampa was more part of the conversation, and, and now Tampa is less. We can't say that Tampa's in the clear by any means, but mm -hmm. Tampa is not as much in the conversation as it was, let's say, 48 hours ago. But but to this this, this question is about intensity, Re mm -hmm. Rebecca. Category three is a major hurricane. Category mm -hmm. four, five, a major hurricane. So the chances this becomes major? It's a possibility. Um, so the way that this system is forming is that there's an, an area of, of a broad rotation uh, just south of there. We call it the gyre. And so a little storms spin off of it, and that's how we get rotation. Typically, when we see a gyre or origin storm spin off in this region, it takes a little bit to get organized. It's not a fast thing. And so that's what makes me, f originally made me favor the Euro because that's kind of how gyre storms look when they spin off. They take a minute to get organized. They're slow moving. They don't race off into the Gulf, but it's looking more and more likely that this system might not behave like a traditional gyre storm. And so depending on how much time these this system is able to spend over those extreme ocean energy uh, temperatures that unfortunately we do have the chance to see a stronger storm, possibly a category three or above. You said the, the warmest waters on the planet right now? Some of the warmest waters on yeah, the planet. That's, absolutely. That's, that's, yeah. uh, that'll, that'll get uh, your attention real fast when we're talking, of course, about that being the fuel for um, storms to grow in intensity. Uh, this has been uh, more of a, a a brief episode of Tracking the Tropics. We're not going to go for that much uh, longer. Uh, mm -hmm. Reason being is because we might have a lot more streams ahead. And uh, we don't I know mean, what's going to happen. And we don't know <laughs> what's going to happen. We have now at least some agreement. but um, And that's certainly news. The reason that we wanted to get on this, this Friday, September 20th, is because... The, the, Rebecca, this has already started to generate a lot of social media chatter where people are talking about oh this. Oh, my and it's, goodness. And, and look, borderline, we, we can talk about this for a second. Mm -hmm. Some of the social media chatter is is borderline irresponsible or even reckless because there is so much uncertainty at this stage. And we're talking about, I mean, you mentioned it earlier, we would have an idea as to where the storm is headed. Maybe a, really a week from now is when we would have a high level of confidence. We're not even in, in the... The actual week when this would, you know, no, have we're a not even in the parking lot. <laughs> right, we're not in the parking lot. <laughs> we're not in the car on the way. <laughs> we're still at home. Um, and so I, I just caution you. I, I don't. I enjoy the weather enthusiasm on the internet as yeah. much as anyone. I'm the biggest weather nerd there is. And so I'm looking at all the forecast models. I understand why you would want to look at all the forecast models as well. I would caution you if you see a post that scares you, that some people don't get paid unless you click on their site. And so they might be a little more apt to post one model run of one scenario that looks very bad instead of presenting all of the information or taking a calmer approach. And so I just urge you to get your weather information from somewhere trusted where I get paid whether you click on the site or not. I'm just giving you the information. I'm giving you exactly what I know. I'm trying to give you exactly what I don't know also. And I think that you need to find a clear voice that you can understand uh, in the weather community that can provide that for you because there are some wild social media posts out there. Yeah, and, and it's more than just the visual, right? When you see these models, it, it's some look, it takes a meteorologist to really be you know able to understand the science behind the model and and where you know uh, the the level of confidence is in a particular model. Also, understanding the reputations, the strengths and weaknesses of each model as well. Uh, I'm not a meteorologist, but I learn from meteorologists all the time about how these models can really vary and how dependent they are and, and what they are good at versus not as good at. It, it's more, it's a lot more than just colorful lines or colorful arrows 
on a screen. A tremendous amount of science goes into even just getting this summary up on the center of your screen. But we appreciate, of course, the time, the experience, the expertise of Max Fender 8 meteorologist Rebecca Barry joining us here on Tracking the Tropics. We appreciate all of you out there uh, paying attention, of course, to a storm that uh, hasn't even become an invest yet, but we will be continue. We will, of course, continue to track here on Tracking the Tropics with the Max Fender 8 weather team in Tampa, Florida. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a happy, healthy, safe weekend out there, folks, and we'll see you next time on the program. Find Tracking the Tropics on these platforms. And for storm updates, the latest models, and helpful resources, visit trackingthetropics.tv.